Hello and welcome to Engine Adventures off-road review of this 2022 Nissan Armada. Has the 5.6 liter V8. Four-wheel drive low, of course, with the two-speed transfer case. And let's go ahead and see what this thing can do. Before we get into the high speed, I wanted to show the articulation here or the lack thereof. So this does have, you can see the airline running in right there, uh, auto leveling rear suspension. It's independent suspension and it does not have HBMC, hydraulic body motion control. So yeah, really not a ton of wheel travel, especially down travel. Let's get a look underneath. That's the air pump right there. But Anyway, not a lot of travel there. On this side, it stuffs okay. It actually has a decent amount of up travel, but that down travel is really limited. And if we go here to the front, uh, that's about all you get here. We can lift that up. Back off the ground. So there you go, it's off the ground. That's all the wheel travel you have up front, which again, independent suspension, not too bad and not quite as stuffed on this side but still up in there pretty well you still have to be able to turn so you can't stuff it as much but not too bad let's go ahead and do the uh, high speed off road now okay we are in four wheel drive auto and doing the high speed off road this thing has independent suspension of course and that means limited wheel travel but generally a smoother ride over the smaller bumps and even the bigger bumps i guess because it's not tossing you side to side as much so we're at 20 miles an hour that's about as fast as i want to go yeah, drop down a little bit there i was worried about scraping the front end but probably shouldn't be another thing that really benefits the armada is stock 33 inch tires so they're pretty big. I'll have to put that number up on the screen to make sure, but they're 275, 60 R20s, I wanna say. Um, anyway, pretty big tire for a stock vehicle and pretty capable rig in general. So I do love the Armada. Not as muddy as it has been the past couple of times, but still pretty muddy and 20 miles an hour is about right for it. So I didn't, feel any hard bottoming out till right there and it wasn't even that hard so it did bottom out at 20 on those bumps and I believe I hit those in the Ram Rebel at about 25 and ended up hitting really pretty hard so let's go back and get some outside footage A little bit up on the windshield, but really not much. All right, four wheel drive, getting glare anyway. Four wheel drive high, sorry, four wheel drive auto. When you hit the traction control button, you can only do push it once, but it does turn off some of the sensors and other things and it turns off traction control. If you hold it down, it doesn't do anything. It just kicks it back on and then doesn't let you turn it off. So only push it once. You don't push it and hold it down to turn off all the other stability control and stuff like that. Um, you just push it the one time and you're good to go. I wanna go through all the modes and where they show up. So right now, tow mode, this is that button right there. We are in four low, but tow mode still can be used so you can see the green toe right there four low turns off the traction control and stuff automatically if you hit snow mode right here this button will stay recessed and snow shows up right there so it's a little hard to see it says four low there and snow and so you can have tow mode on and snow mode at the same time which is funny because they kind of contradict each other a little bit but you can do that in four auto four high and four low as well and the snow mode really deadens the throttle, gives you a lot of precise 
movement uh, for rock crawling and stuff where your vehicle is going to get damaged. And then the tow haul mode, tow mode. Maybe something a little better for sand or snow that's deeper where you want a lot of throttle, but anyway, a little bit more sensitive throttle to keep the power up. And yeah, interesting that you can uh, do those in all the modes and it does change the drive. I wish it did have the rock mode and the locker that the uh, patrol gets in other countries, but wishful thinking. Here in four wheel drive auto with traction control on, it really just isn't able to climb it because traction control cuts the power so quick. So the four wheel drive auto kicks in automatically super fast. Both the front passenger wheel and rear driver wheel are spinning, but traction control just cuts power too much for it to really work. Disabling traction control makes a world of difference here. So you can see the wheels spin a lot more. This allows the ABLS, which is active brake limited slip, to kick in and pretty much make this an easy climb. Here in snow mode with traction control on, we see pretty much the same results. With traction control on, it cuts the throttle so much it's just not able to do it. Snow mode definitely deadens the throttle and it actually makes it a little bit easier to be more precise. So if you're rock crawling, snow mode might actually be more beneficial than the normal mode. And again, turning off traction control just makes a world of difference as far as getting power to the wheels with traction. In tow mode, the throttle seemed just a tiny bit more aggressive than normal mode. I'm sure it changes shift points and things like that at higher speeds, but here at low speed, it seemed pretty much the same as normal mode. And then I started with traction control on. You see immediately once I turn it off, it just is able to climb the hill no problem. Here, four-wheel drive high with traction control on, and we have pretty much the same results as we had in four-wheel drive auto with traction control on. And just like in the three previous drive modes, turning off traction control in four-wheel drive high makes it much more capable. Four-wheel drive low automatically disables traction control and stability control. So four-wheel drive low is going to have the least amount of intervention from the computer systems. And look how aggressive the ABLS system is. It stops those wheels from spinning that are in the air almost immediately. For the ABLS system to work its best, you need to be between about 1200 and 2000 RPM. And snow mode deadens the throttle and it makes it a lot easier to pick a really precise RPM and get the perfect amount of movement that you want. So I recommend if you're rock crawling or doing something where you have potential for damage, go ahead and use snow mode. Make sure you're in four wheel drive low and you'll do just fine. Last one, four wheel drive low in tow haul. Tow haul mode, it does make the throttle just a tiny bit more sensitive than normal mode. And it's a pretty big difference versus snow mode. But again, four wheel drive low, ABLS kicks in super quick and makes this hill no problem at all. All right, we are in four wheel drive low. There is no downhill assist on this thing. You can see here, four wheel drive low, hopefully that shows up and we're in neutral. Manual first gear now, let's see if I can shade that. So four low and manual first gear. And let's try this. Hopefully I can do it without scraping the bottom. I'm still on the brake and I'm scraping the bottom pretty rough. Okay, still on the brake. This is a really, I'm just sliding all four wheels. So yeah, that's how steep this is. Um, let's see, there's the big hole. Get rid of the beeping. And there's still one more hole. Now we can let go of it. 
about five miles an hour. The gearing on this thing's really not great. I'll put up the axle ratio and the crawl ratio, but the axle ratio is something like a 3.02 or a 290 something, I can't remember. So it's a really not a great axle ratio for towing or off-roading, and maybe that's where they get their good gas mileage from, or or slightly better gas mileage from than they were getting in the past, but really it needs better low range gearing uh, for better control, both towing and when you're off-roading, if you're in four wheel drive low, you need that for going downhills, going uphills. It's definitely beneficial to have that lower range towing. Now we're going back into four wheel drive auto and you push this down when you're going between four low and four high or four high and four low, you push it down and twist it. Um, we're back in four auto now, traction controls on and let's give this a shot here. I love SUVs, especially big ones because they can handle that approach angle. Okay, first set of holes here. And it gave up. Traction control is now off. I am full throttle, sitting at just over 2,000 RPM. Ooh. It's doing it, but man, is it a workout! Throttle again. This one I don't think it's gonna do. And it, oh, it lost it there. So I don't know what happened, but it lost it. So now we'll go back over to here, see if we can get it into four low. There it goes. Drive, accidentally hit tow mode. We'll just hit snow mode, a little bit more precise control here. It's certainly jerky, I can hear the ABS going, but it can make that, so there we go. I need my camera because there is a boulder on the right side. Looks like we just missed it. And just cleared the approach angle there. All right. Well, that was a workout. 
but it's able to do it. And these tires, this is actually the first time where I ran out of tire. I was in a different spot, but the tires were really struggling just because it's so muddy out here. I mean, it's not super muddy, but muddy enough that they're just getting gummed up. And yeah, the tires weren't able to do it. So yeah, not too bad. It was able to make the steep, hardest section of the steep hill climb in four wheel drive low, four wheel drive high. As long as you turn off traction control, it does all right. The first thing we see is that big front air dam hanging down and then hardly any skid plates. Everything's tucked up except for the gas tank there and there really isn't any protection. Uh, the main protection comes from everything being elevated up between the frame rails. And there, the spare tire on the rear does hang down pretty low as well. Thank you for watching Engine Adventures Review, off-road review of this 2022 Nissan Armada SL Midnight Edition. It's a pretty darn capable vehicle. Nissan's kind of cut its capabilities down for the US market. Really high gearing, so it gets better gas mileage. It's great for driving on the freeway and stuff like that, but that high gearing hurts you when you get off-roading and need the lower gearing to be able to climb a little better, to go down hills and maintain control a little better. Doesn't have the rear locker that other countries do, but Still, very capable vehicle on par with just about anything else on the market. Uh, it rides pretty smooth at high speed off-road as well. It doesn't have the wheel travel that a Sequoia TRD Pro does. And yeah, I really like it. Great vehicle overall. If you haven't already noticed, I love the Armada. I just wish that Nissan would bring maybe an off-road version that is more in line with the Nissan Patrol. Anyway, if you liked what you saw, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications when we post new videos, and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, and you gave me a thumbs down, be sure to comment down below and let me know why. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.